Ah, you checked it out, didn't you? I sure hope so. More coffee. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, Mythbusters, they don't lie. Mythbusters do not lie. All right. So earlier I had on the board, well, in the last video that I did, uh, we had on the board um, uh, the idea that, you know, something is, if it's moving with something and it's dropped, it has the velocity of that thing. You know this. You do. You do know that one. I'll say, for example... That, so where this plane is nice, flying nice and level, and it sees this poor person in the ocean. And you can see they're not doing very well, and their eyes show that. You know, it's all in the eyes when it comes to drawing things, eyebrows. If I made the eyebrows like this, mm, they'd be like angry eyebrows. Mm, this is like, ooh, sad eyebrows. Mm, angry. Okay, it's all in the eyebrows, remember that. So if I were to... So we want to drop a care package to this person who's in the ocean. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. Anyone? Anyone? I know this, one, this one's tough. I wouldn't expect too many of you to water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Okay, it's a poem. No, no, I didn't think so. Okay, back in my day, we had to read it. Yeah, it was no short poem either. <laughs> oh, and the point is, <coughs> we want to drop this care package. He's not a, not a bomb, okay? This is a, <coughs> a nice, friendly, happy helping plane, not a bomb people plane, nice plane. We're going to drop this care package, hence the red cross on it, to this person that's in this, this boat. And so what are we going to do? Are we going to drop, release the care package right here above the person? Is that what we're going to do? Because, you know, it's right, oh, it's right above. It'll, you let it go here, it'll straight down into the boat. Yep. No. See, you know that. You know, you know that. You know that if you release this, it's going to be moving forward projectile. Matter of fact, it'll be a horizontal projectile. Why it's called horizontal? Because we would have its initial velocity, just it's moving horizontally, straight. Well, there are projectiles at angles, absolutely, and we will cover those. But right now, we're doing projectile horizontally launched. So we'd have to launch that care package out here somewhere. So therefore, it goes, <whistles> at least gets near the boat. We don't want to launch it here and have this poor person who's dehydrated and weak how to go and swim in the shark tank. Shark store, so shark infested water, okay? That'd be cruel. So we want to release it out here. And we could calculate that. This is a physics problem. We can calculate if we know how fast the plane is going, what the height is above the water. Um, we could determine where we'd have to release the package to get it on target. All right, okay. One of the first computers was... <laughs> ah, good stuff. Was um, uh, called the Norden Bomb Site. The Norden Bomb Site was developed by the Americans during World War II to help them in what, what they were hoping for to be uh, precision daylight bombing. And it was a rudimentary computer where it took into account the height of the aircraft. It took into account how fast the aircraft was moving. And it also took into, to some effect, a little bit of wind velocity. And it did a calculation telling the, the, the bombardier when to release the bombs to put them on target, because that's a physics problem. I mean, before then, it was just kind of like, you know, trial and error, and just you know, drop here, and if you have enough bombs, you'll hit something. Okay? Yeah, no, no. Okay? America came up with this using physics and a physics calculation, but this did the calculation for them. Nobody actually had to do it. This bomb site did. All right, so a little bit of history for you. Okay, we'll learn all kinds of cool things. So let's do a problem, which is horizontal, a horizontal problem. Okay, so I, I'm gonna erase this. I mean, this is a horizontal problem, but we'll give you a problem like this. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the red that well. So let's switch it up. With this ground. Okay, let's say you are standing on cliff. Okay, you are on a cliff and you are going to toss a baseball. Okay, you toss baseball off cliff. With me? I'm going to draw that out for you.
Okay. Remember, this problem is you are on cliff. <laughs> you, 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 E W E, you, a female sheep is a you. So that is my, uh, that's cliff. You are on cliff. I thought it was funny. Okay, tough crowd. All right. You are on cliff and you toss the baseball. Okay, you have a baseball in hand and you toss this baseball horizontally at 50 meters per second, which we all know is over 100 miles an hour, be like 100 and 508 miles an hour. Pretty good toss for you. Okay. And Cliff is 50 meters high. Okay. And he's also angry. You see, remember earlier I said it's in the eyebrows? See, those are angry eyebrows. It's all in the eyebrows. All right, so how far? Here's a question. <laughs> oh, okay. How far does the baseball go from the edge, or the top of cliff? How far this way? So we're trying to calculate. I'm going to call it D sub H. Horizontal distance. Distance horizontal. We're trying to figure out how far the ball goes and where it will land. Okay, how far will it, will it land? All right, so and it's kind of like the problem I just had on the board. Or the plane, maybe the plane is moving at 50 meters per second and at 50 meters above the ship, the, the boat. And, you know, we were going to figure out how far, if we knew how far it would go, then we could know, we'd know when to launch it. Same kind of a problem here. All right, so we want to know how far it's going to go. Okay, very simple equation. Now, remember, this is important. Oh, it's so important that this velocity has nothing to do with falling. The falling velocity is going to be, what's that word? Remember, Hermie the dentist? Independent. This motion is independent of this. They don't have anything to do with each other. They don't care about each other. One says, you do your thing and I'll do mine. If I were to draw this, that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna get a forward motion but we're also gonna get a downward motion. And notice that the curve becomes more curvy, steeper curve as time goes on. Why is that? Because gravity is accelerating it. The acceleration due to gravity means it picks up speed downwards as time goes on. So that curve gets steeper because the velocity down gets faster. If we were to draw this out, it would look like this. Notice something. Notice that my arrows that I drew horizontally are the same. They're the same length in all three cases, but the down arrow is not. It's getting better, faster and faster and faster, bigger arrow. So we increase velocity down and we keep the velocity the same sideways because this is not going to be affected by gravity. And this is not gonna be affected by the fact that it's moving sideways. Right? You gotta believe it, people. You gotta just believe it. Okay, how far will it go? Well, we're actually gonna use a very simple equation. Yes, we are. I know you're thinking, oh, it's gonna be all complicated equation. No, it's not. It's actually not. The equation we're gonna use is the simple one. That, that is not good. That is not good. That, that, oh, the, the basket's way over there. I'm gonna take a shot at it. Here we go. Oh, it's just at the top of it. If you could have seen excited about things like that. Right, we'll try this blue marker. Velocity, that's better, is distance over time. It's the very simple first equation that we had in the course. So if I want to find distance, what do you do? You multiply velocity times time. Let's rearrange it. Distance equals velocity times time. This one's dying too. My markers are dying. I need new markers. Distance is velocity times time. All right, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the big three? We need the big three. No, we don't. Here's why. How far it goes to the right is only determined by how fast it's moving to the right. And that velocity does not change. It's not affected by gravity. Therefore, it's not accelerating. There's an acceleration down, but that isn't having to do with how far it goes. 
how fast it's moving sideways is how far it goes, and that doesn't change. So I don't have to use one of the big three acceleration equations. So I just have to use this one because the velocity horizontally isn't changing. In fact, this equation looks like that. Horizontal distance, dh, horizontal distance equals dh, how fast it's moving sideways, and how long it's in the air. Now, how long it's in the air is going to matter. The longer it's in the air, the longer it can keep moving to the right at this velocity. You know that's true. When I was a kid, we used to go get golf balls from the driving range. And I didn't say steal them. I said we borrowed them with the intent of giving them back. Drink some more coffee. <laughs> We would, my brother, myself, and a friend of mine, we'd go to the golf course. It's like a buck fifty for a, a bucket of balls back in the day. That was back in the 1920s, so it was cheap. And like in the middle of the day, and we'd go to the right side of the driving range, and we'd hit these golf balls, and I had a natural slice, and they'd go, shoom, slicing over the side fence. Um, so that's what we would do. And then we would come back when the place would close in the evening, and we would take a, a bag, like a shopping a grocery bag, and we go over to the side of the fence outside of the driving range and we'd borrow them. Yeah, I know, I know, don't report me, please. No. We'd borrow them and take them back home. Now, why did we do this? Because I lived a literal stone's throw away from this park in Monroe County called Ellison Park, Monroe County. Look it up, look it up. Go ahead, Google that. Ellison, Ellison Park, Monroe County. Yeah, see who's telling the truth. And they had these beautiful long hills for sledding in the winter time, but we would take them to the top of these big, huge 400, 500 uh, meter hills that went out and then downhill, and we'd drive golf balls. And Tiger Woods, I even said that when I was 12 years old, in the, in the 1920s, I would take a golf ball and I would <laughs> hit it, and I'd say, <laughs> say, Tiger Woods, you got nothing on me there, buddy. He wasn't alive yet. But I just knew, I knew there was going to be a Tiger Woods. He was going to be a great golfer. And I was hitting shots that were going like 300, 400 yards because they went, it was a hill. So they just kept on going and going and going. It was awesome. You know that things, when they go off a hill, will travel farther. You do. So if we have height higher, the farther it's going to go. All right? So how do we figure this out then? Well, the first part's actually quite easy. This equation is relatively simple, and we have half of it already. We already have half the solution. It's moving at 50 meters per second horizontally. That was given in the problem. Boom. So how far it goes is going to be equal to 50 meters per second. That's the horizontal velocity times time. Now, how long is it going to be in the air? How long will it be in the air? That we have to calculate, and that's determined by the height. You know that, of course you do. If we had something which was only a foot above the surface, like here, it's not gonna be in the air very long, like one-tenth of a second, maybe two-tenths of a second. But if I had something, instead of being one foot, was one mile above the surface of the Earth, it's gonna take a lot longer to fall, so it'll be in the air longer. The higher it is, the longer it's in the air. Now, the longer that it's in the air, the more chance it has to move 50 meters per second sideways. It'll go farther. So this is going to help determine how long it is in the air, the time. Now I gotta calculate that. That wasn't given in the problem like this first part was. We have to calculate it. Now one of the big three does come into play. We need a big three that'll help me calculate how long the time in the air. Now this is an acceleration. See, these arrows, they're getting bigger as it's falling. That's an acceleration. Sideways is not an acceleration, down is. So we do need a big three, an equation that deals with acceleration. Okay, you go ahead, you look at the big three. Which one's gonna work? Well, I need one for time, so the square roots one's not gonna work. Um, the first one, the easy one will work. Let me show you. Uh, no, I mean, not, not, well, the first one, no. The second one will work. It depends on which way I put them, I don't remember. The one with distance and time in it is the one I need because what I have is to find time and I have a distance. Okay, so which equation was that? And depending which order I put them in, it was this one. D is equal to VIT plus one half G T squared. That G is because it's accelerating down due to gravity. All right, let's plug stuff in. Let's solve for time. I know the distance, the height. 
It's at 50 meters. It's going to drop 50 meters. So 50 equals VI. Oh, the initial velocity is 50. Eh, wrong. Eh. What? No. That's horizontal motion. And again, it has nothing to do with going down. We are moving this thing in a downwards direction. The velocity that we start at going down is zero. As soon as it's released, it's moving 50 this way, but zero this way. Then it begins to speed up, zero. So this, going down, is zero, it just goes away. Okay, so we're left with one half, g, which is 9.8 times t squared. So we're solving for that time. So this is going to be 50 divided by 4.9, one half of 9.8 is 4.9. 50 divided by 4.9 equals time if we take the square root, because we've got to get rid of that square Take the square root. So 50 divided by 4.9 was about 10. Square root of 10 is about 3.13, if I remember my square roots. But we'll just verify. Remember, trust but verify, Ronald Reagan. Um, 50 divided by 4.9, okay, second function, blah, blah, second function answer, blah, blah, 3.19, 3.19. So we'll say three points. So. so the time that this is going to be in the air is 3.2 seconds. Now notice that has absolutely nothing to do with how fast it's going. It could be going a million miles an hour. Well, a million miles an hour would be really fast. But, and then this curvature of the Earth in that case would come into play, which makes it much, sorry, okay. If it's moving at 100 meters per second, it doesn't make any difference. It's still going to be in the air 3.2 seconds. <sighs> We're ready. Put that in here and get the answer. So the thing that you have to calculate with the horizontal projectile problem, and if I do that, the seconds cancel out, and I multiply 50 times 3.2, and that's 150 and 0.2 of 50 is 10, so it would be 160 meters. So the horizontal distance that this ball would travel is 160 meters to the right before it strikes the ground. A couple of things. One, we toss it horizontally, not at an angle. Two, the ground was at an angle. The ground was at an angle. If the ground were sloped, it'd go farther. As I was giving you that story earlier about hitting golf balls off of a slope, okay, that wasn't horizontal. That was sloped. So if we hit the golf balls on horizontal, they're going here. We hit them on a slope, they go here. So we had horizontal and horizontal. Yeah, you can see it. You know what's going to happen. You can have problems where things are not horizontal. That's the next video. And we can also have the surface not being horizontal. And what would happen in that case? How would we solve that? That's physics, people. That's physics. It keeps getting more and more complex. All right, one last thing before this video ends. At what height? At what angle? No, no, no. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll just pick that up right at the beginning of the next video. I need more coffee, okay? And you need a break. And this is a problem that we should be able to solve, okay? When it comes to projectiles, horizontal projectile, there's my projectile equation. It's very simple. I was given the horizontal velocity. We had to calculate time using the D equation, the D equals VIT plus one half GT squared. We solve for that, put that in the equation, multiply, got our answer. Okay, it's not that bad, really. It's not that bad at all. Um, all right, next video, we'll be at an angle and I'll be more pumped because I'll have more coffee.